with this wonderful day, with so many people that came to honor the number two construction battalion, those soldiers from Yarmouth. And I was very proud when I started to uh, research how many soldiers we had that were willing to go, willing to serve, even though they weren't given a chance to, to fight, they still wanted to go. A very special ceremony took place in Yarmouth on September 22nd. A monument and interpretive panel were unveiled to recognize the number two black construction battalion and the Yarmouth black soldiers who served with this battalion during the First World War. These were men who were willing to enlist and fight in the name of their country, but they were told they couldn't. Why? Because of the color of their skin. Because they were black. The message they were given is this is a white man's war. But they fought anyway. They fought to fight. Eventually, they were accepted into the war effort, but as a Black Battalion construction unit. As the name implies, they did construction work to support the military by cutting trees, carrying out logging, building roads, doing railroad construction, administering water systems to camps, and more. Their work was important to the war effort, and yet when these men returned home, there was nothing awaiting them. No fanfare, no thank yous. It was sharp contrast to the parades and celebrations that greeted other soldiers when they returned home. The racism that existed before these men left for the war still existed when they came back home. At the September 22nd ceremony in Yarmouth, people called this shameful. The First World War ended in November 1918, but still recognition did not follow for a long time. In 1982, Senator Calvin Ruck and the Black Cultural Center of Nova Scotia held a recognition and reunion banquet for the battalion. Years later, Senator Ruck wrote the book, The Black Battalion, 1916 to 1920, Canada's Best Kept Military Secret. Calvin Ruck's wife, Joyce, and his son, Douglas, were at the monument unveiling in Yarmouth. Douglas Ruck spoke about how important it was to his father that the story of the number two battalion continues to be told, to be heard, and to be learned. What did it feel like to have that kind of blatant rejection? It had to hurt, he said of the men who wanted to serve their country, but were turned away because of the color of their skin. Chuck Smith was visibly emotional throughout the ceremony. A descendant of the number two battalion, his granddad, Sergeant Charles Nathan Smith, never spoke to Smith or his family about his battalion experience and about being shunned because of the color of his skin. The day before the ceremony, Saltwire asked Chuck Smith, if your granddad was here now and you could ask him one question, what would it be? That's a really good one. I have to think that through. Yeah. You know, I would ask grand, granddad, what was your motivation for going? Mm. Why? Because why? you knew that you were rejected. You couldn't, couldn't get in the trenches and fight, couldn't bear arms. Why did you go? Although truthfully, Chuck Smith probably already knows the answer. This is Tina Camo, reporting for Saltwire in Yarmouth.